Hey Rob Bags, it's Jay. Today giving you the complete recap of everything that we've learned about update 1.4 for the Oats, the last planned content update. PAX East gave us a bunch of reveals when they showed off some of this stuff for the first time and since then over the few weeks we've had lots of social interactions and questions being answered on the Casually Dev stream. So here it is, the complete lowdown. Let's go. So yes, of course, Grounded is launching on PlayStation and Xbox, PS4 and PS5 in fact, and you will be able to play completely cross-play and cross-progression. This has been confirmed once again by Double Eleven, the people behind the ports. Every aspect of Grounded will be available on the new platforms. Playgrounds, creative mode, nothing is being changed, watered down or removed. For Xbox and PC players, we've got New Game Plus to look forward to, continuing our adventures on and on over and over again in increasingly difficult remixed backyards. And this will commence at the secret doorway that's been in the game a few months now, once we've defeated and matched certain criteria, completing the Java-matic, taking on the Broodmother, the Woz Queen, as well as the Mantis. All four combinations of them things, and you'll be able to begin a New Game Plus mode before you finish off the full story or just go ahead and complete the full game and then reload your last save and continue to play Grounded. Once inside that doorway in this special new laboratories, we'll be turning this dial to begin the new Remix Yards. Remix Yards will change how you play Grounded and the look of the yards. They'll sometimes have different branding on some of the candy and food wrappers. We've also cosmetic changes to the tree and sandbox changing colour. Milk molars and raw science will now spawn in random generated positions. So you'll be able to go ahead and keep upgrading your health, your stamina and more with the milk molars and get increased amounts of raw science with 1500 available from one pod here. You're going to need a ton of that raw science to help unlock brand new recipes for new candy infused weapons. So far we've spotted over 12 unique designs and brand new re-ups for some of your favourites. Where you had the mint mallet, you'll now be able to have the sour sledgehammer, fresh edge axe or even a sour katanga. I'm not going to list and rattle off every weapon that we've seen, but definitely some things I'm curious about like the wallapino, the two bladed axe and the curvy sour sword. And while some may do similar damage types to what we've experienced, a lot of them have got brand new looks and not simply just changing the colour or candy type. With bugs being much tougher to beat now with increased health as well as being able to do more damage, you're certainly going to need all the help you can get. So it looks like we'll be crafting all of them at the brand new Yokin station where you'll be buying this also from the science shop, as well as have the ability to upgrade your current weapons beyond level 9. As far as we know, you can carry on replaying and redoing New Game Plus, i.e. remixed yards, with seemingly no cap. So if you absolutely love katanas, but you always wanted a fresh, salty or sour, you'll be able to change it over to any of them. Any of the elemental weapons that you currently have will have all brand new variants in New Game Plus. With the more unique looking weapons, it looks like some of these will be direct alternative style weapons to collect as well in New Game Plus that you might not be able to get all in one run. It's been confirmed that some of these new candy types, although they may still give us the similar things we're used to like spicy chunks, sour pieces and fresh pieces, some of them won't spawn in every New Game Plus remixed yard. So there's still some deliberation about whether or not we'll be able to actually access and craft every weapon if we can't necessarily get hold of every new candy type or are they just simply reskins to freshen up the look and don't actually change the recipes themselves. Bugs and bosses simply aren't getting a big boost to health or damage, some of them are getting brand new attributes. You'll have up to 5 levels in terms of stacking on some bugs that you'll come across, basically giving them new attacks. If wolf spiders weren't dangerous enough with their poison, how about ones that fire sour charges at you too? It looks like these attributes will carry on stacking on the bugs that randomly have a chance of spawning with these new attributes. So you could come across a spider or another bug that might have 5 brand new abilities attached to it as well as the increased health pool. This is definitely not for beginners in Grounded. Not every bug, not every creature will have these attributes but only the ones infused with that random chance. No creatures are having their typical resistances or strengths changed either. Termites are still going to be weak against salt, you'll find fire ants weak still against fresh. 
It's just these new attributes, whether it's offensive or defensive, added randomly generated for each infused bug that's going to make things a bit more interesting while fighting and exploring New Game Plus. And the same applies to bosses. In fact, every boss encounter in New Game Plus will have these new attributes and will be infused. And this apparently is going to stack. So the first time you take on a boss, it'll have one brand new attribute. The next time you take it on in the second New Game Plus, it'll have two and onwards up to a maximum of 10 brand new attributes. So you could be facing off against the assistant manager with 10 new abilities, plus changes to some of the arenas and the chances that their minions will also spawn in with infused abilities. Checking out this assistant manager boss fight, you can see it looks like it's got the symbol for maybe extra stamina or faster replenishing stamina, or maybe even just speed, more stabbing damage, extra health, maybe resistance to bomb damage, as well as maybe some sort of spicy extra defense or attack. So the abilities will not just be offensive, they can be defensive, giving bosses brand new buffs. Infused creatures and bosses are gonna drop lots of goodies, including more raw science and the chance to drop trinkets. These brand new trinkets will have random stats applied and statuses with all new ones being added, like stamina surge and summon crit. These trinkets, called crinkles, cones, or waffles, will have these random effects. If you don't like them and want to use them up, you can turn them into ooze, and then this is what you'll be using to upgrade your weapons at the yoking station. So simple enough, take on the brand new infused bugs, use the parts that they drop to carry on upgrading your new weapons, while also unlocking random statted new trinkets. There's going to be a new game plus version of the super duper machine as well, the d duper which we do believe transforms a lot of the trinkets into the ooze, but also may turn some of your other items into either raw science or raw components. There are also going to be brand new ominent trinkets as well as other various ones with different random stats you'll be able to find in the remix yards. So not just from killing any of the infused bugs. So every boss and mini boss will be an infused variant. And we'll have to keep retaking on the Woz Queen, the Broodmother and the Mantis as well as the Java Final Defense to keep progressing in New Game Plus over and over again. What we're not 100% certain on just yet is whether or not we've got to complete all of the laboratories and if all story elements will be reset. We do know that some environmental factors will be, so things like the spade you'll have to go ahead and blow up again to get easy access to the picnic table and you will have to turn off the haze once more. So it stands to reason that we're probably going to have to complete all the laboratories once again to get hold of the super chips needed to progress the story. What won't reset is your progress. Your base is going to be fine. You don't need to panic. Your base will be in exactly the same position as it's always been. Your gear, your items will still be there. All the resources you've collected, your pets, everything will be there. You just simply have now a chance to go ahead and add more to them by upgrading your weapons beyond level nine and your armor, as well as unlocking all these new ones. All the candy variants and types can only be got in New Game Plus. So any of the bugs in Grounded will have a chance to be infused. Not all bugs will, but even water bugs will have that new infused abilities. To alleviate the grind and time from getting from one place to another, teleporties will now be available in survival mode. These are gonna be deployables. That means you can't build them, you can only buy them and then place them from the science shop. You should be able to hopefully have up to 100, but it obviously will cost quite a bit of raw science and they will only be available in New Game Plus. Now, if any of this isn't sounding like your bag, you're not someone that really carries on playing a game once you've got to the end, there is some new content for you too. They are adding the free ant queens. There's gonna be three ways to deal with them. Feed them their favorite food, sandos, or go ahead and feed them poison. And obviously you get the benefits from maybe both. Being friendly with them, they'll cough up a special ant pet for you to keep and each one will be unique and different. So you can have a fire baby ant, a black baby ant, as well as a regular baby ant. There's then the poison method, so we can kill them. We won't directly be having any kind of combat or fight with these creatures. The devs have said it's about choices. So befriend them, get a baby ant. Poison them, maybe get some resources to make some of the brand new tiered ant armor. 
we may need a combination of body parts from the Ant Queen and the pheromones that we see the jewels of in this armor set. In this example shown at Paxis, they befriended the Fire Ant Queen and then they were given the option to just pick up some of the pheromone. Will that pheromone have other uses? Back in the day in the game files there were a special scepter that could go ahead and use to summon lots of ants to fight by your side and this still seems a credible idea given that the baby pet ants won't necessarily be combat focused and just like other aphid creatures and weevils and gnats that we have as pets. There will be some lasting repercussions though. There is a third option greyed out by a question mark. My theory is, and a lot of people's, that this may unleash infected creatures as there has been some new infected black ant parts seen in the game dev console. Our choices will have repercussions and may make some of the ant hills deserted for that time being, or maybe yes, release the infected ants all across the yard. There could be another conjecture point that we might be able to befriend all of the ants in the yard by obviously being friendly with all three, and that means they won't attack us anymore, even the fire ants and black ants. Especially the fire ants, as only black ants on the picnic table generally will attack you unless they're soldiers. And no, the lizard is not coming. It's been confirmed a bunch of times that they're not adding that as a creature. Grounded is having brand new achievements added, seemingly four brand new ones, as well as a new mutation, which we do think has something to do with ants, as I think it's called Ant Ambassador. Perhaps some of this ant armor might end up being tier 4 or some of the weapons will be able to craft from it as well as a whole host of new weapons which I can't talk about just yet as I'm keeping it as a surprise with the trailer launch on the 15th but I have seen some of the tier 4 gear incoming and it does look really cool. You can get some more teasers of that by watching some of my live streams. Other new stuff coming is a selection of brand new rugs. 14 ant related decor pieces as well as the brand new termite organ. There's not going to be any new big build pieces though, so you won't have another tier of building tile sets. Just strictly decor, and there may be more still to come. Are these new chandeliers something to do with the water fleas or the spiny ones, and maybe their spines? We are expecting a huge amount of improvements to optimization. The game has been ported over to Switch, which is significantly a lot less powerful hardware than even an Xbox One. So that should be returned. Some of the improvements have already actually been made and added. You may have noticed that Grounded might run a little bit better on some Xboxes. And we're hoping to see some improvements to playgrounds or at least some new playgrounds officially created by maybe Obsidian. The devs have been mysteriously posting lots of playgrounds with weird names, clearly not for us to play just yet, and they've definitely been doing some testing. It won't be the last ever update for Grounded, there will be significant hotfixes, maybe quality life additions going forward, so I imagine that some improvements to playgrounds will continue. And on top of that mechanical kind of info, yes, there will be lots of stuff happening with PlayStation and Switch. And of course, crossplay and cross progression is going to be guaranteed. You can start up a game on your Xbox, go and play on your Switch and have the same world running. Every feature that you know and come to love from Xbox and PC will be there on PlayStation and Switch. So you can play lots of different playgrounds. You can share worlds with your friends, creative mode, you name it, it will be there with the new platforms. So there we go folks, I think that's everything you need to know. Whether or not you've missed original videos by me and other creators, it'll keep you in the loop. What to expect with the update drop in, it will be going live at 4 p.m. UK time. That should be around 11 a.m. Eastern time and about 8 a.m. on the West Coast. Google's your friends, check other areas in the world. The trailer is dropping the day before at 5 p.m. UK and I've got an analysis video going live with that at the same time as I've already got a copy of it, of course. I'm gonna have so many guides on the new stuff but I will be showing a lot of love to the brand new PlayStation and Switch players. So until then, the last update ever. Bye-bye.